threat. I wanna stay like a silhouette, but I can't do that. No, I can't do that. Hey, internet friends. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Seattle's new autonomous zone, also known as Chaz where they proudly display handwritten signs declaring, you are now leaving the United States on their borders encapsulating a six block area. This autonomous zone was established by Antifa and other protesters after the police and National Guard pulled out of Seattle's Capitol Hill neighborhood. As a brief aside, every time I say Chaz, an image of Chaz Bono pops into my head and I can't make it stop, so now you must suffer too. Anyway, the media seems to be largely ignoring this major event that occurred within the last week or framing the occupation of Seattle as rainbow unicorn utopia. So I figured I'd get all y'all caught up to speed in case you were unaware because it's a pretty big deal. Let's begin. On Monday, June 8, 2020, after weeks of tense relations between protesters and police, Seattle law enforcement removed barricades from around the East Precinct and Capitol Hill and they retreated from that area, which allowed Antifa and other protesters to set up their autonomous zone which spanned six blocks of police-free territory. It was also noted that Seattle Fire removed Quote, many personal effects of the officers normally stationed in the East Precinct as a part of a proactive effort to guard against potential damage or fire, end quote. Perhaps a little bit of foreshadowing there. The next day, the same protesters sued city cops for their use of excessive force during what the media has dubbed the peaceful protests of Seattle. On Tuesday evening, protesters carrying Black Lives Matter banners called for Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin to stand down. How'd they get into Seattle City Hall, you might ask? Well, Seattle City Council member Kashama Sawant unlocked the building for them and welcomed them inside. So basically, these protesters were given this territory under the explicit direction of the Seattle mayor, whose orders were carried out by Seattle police. And the protesters stormed City Hall because a city council member let them in. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? This territory was not taken by protesters. It was given to them. Given to them by the government of Seattle. Meanwhile, I'm filming this video on Friday, June 12th at 9 a.m. And since the storming of City Hall, the coverage of this autonomous zone has been pretty limited to Twitter and Reddit posts, so the story and details are a bit convoluted. But there are reports that protesters have set up barricades and arm checkpoints around the zone and declared that no police are allowed inside. I've read some seemingly civilian tweets, but you never know, describing the area, saying that it's more like a festival with a bunch of tents and community interaction and hugs and rainbows, and everyone's happy and there is absolutely nothing sinister about the situation, and I've read other accounts stating that SoundCloud rapper, Airbnb superhost, and Twitter checkmark account Raz Simone and his posse have claimed the new autonomous zone of Chaz as their territory. And this guy has allegedly been patrolling the area with an AK-47 and other weapons, assaulting Chaz members who don't toe the line. So, which is true? Chaz is a peace and love Antifa utopia, or... Or it's been overtaken by some checkmark SoundCloud rapper that they prematurely labeled a warlord. I'm going to go with neither. I suspect that neither is completely true. And the CIA has, is absolutely having a field day with this. They're probably giggling like little schoolgirls right now, throwing vegan meats off a bridge and seeding discord across Chaz. Reports have surfaced that Chaz ran out of food within 48 hours because the homeless people that were invited to join the, the emerging utopia had stolen all of the food. And tweets were sent out begging for volunteers to bring vegan meat substitutes, fruits, oats, and soy products. They've since planted a garden, established these communal food stations, managed to designate safe spaces with their, within their own safe space, just like college taught them to do. And they had one of their own leaders demoted for sexual harassment within the first six hours of operation. While there's been a concerted effort across the media to either not mention this ongoing incident or to downplay it, President Trump's been on Twitter calling for local and state leaders to respond to this problem. The optics right now of the United States are really just terrible. Weeks of unrest, of cities burning, and now major cities being occupied by groups like Antifa. 
Of course, this is your problem reaction solution. It's the perfect storm for the military to come in and police these cities as soon as they're ordered, which in my opinion would be even worse. So, okay, let's talk about Seattle and Antifa for a moment. Some interesting bits about Seattle. It's home to a handful of Fortune 500 companies like Amazon, Microsoft, and Starbucks. There is a huge concentration of military there and of military industrial complex and government contractors. Juggernauts like Boeing who put Seattle on the map. Of course, Seattle is Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates territory. They both have residences there. In fact, Bill Gates' family has been there for a hot minute since his great grandpa was the president of the Federal Reserve Seattle branch. So while we took a break from Bill Gates and viruses for a moment during these protests, we never really stopped talking about him because he never stopped being there. Furthermore, if you don't know who or what Antifa is, they're a movement which unites on their militant opposition to fascism and what they dub other right-wing ideology since they tend to swing more towards more extreme left-wing political ideologies like communism and socialism. Since these folks claim to be an anti-fascist group, you'll see a lot of their signage compare leaders and those who oppose their movement to Adolf Hitler. But it's curious because National Socialism was the ideology associated with the Nazi party. So what do we all even say at this point? Up is down and down is up. But I want to place some emphasis here on this autonomous zone being largely operated by Antifa, which you know, you hear and you think Antifa, that group is the group that Trump has threatened to list as a domestic terrorist organization. But am I alone here when I see the headline that Antifa is occupying this territory and was aided by Seattle government in doing so? What I see is that this area has been overthrown by socialists and communists. And okay, since this is my commentary, I'll give you my opinion. Under a corrupt government, I can personally embrace autonomous zones, but I don't embrace autonomous zones sponsored by the corrupt government. Same way with protests. I get comments pointing out my bias in these commentaries and I just want to say, well, heck yeah, of course I'm biased and I'm not trying to hide it from you. I've read the full list of demands from this group in their autonomous zone and not once did I see mention that they want to abolish the Federal Reserve System which has been looting our country since 1913. Where are the demands about term limits and budget cuts for everyone in Washington, D.C.? Where is the mention about how many billions of taxpayer dollars we send to Israel each year? Where is the mention about the needless, expensive wars we fight on these false pretenses? Can I get behind the demilitarization of police? I sure can. Can I get behind ending civil asset forfeiture? You know it. But since absolutely none of this is mentioned in the list of demands and the premise is divisive rhetoric masquerading as justice, no, sorry, I can't take this government-sponsored autonomous zone seriously. The people of Waco, the people of Ruby Ridge died for a lot less. If the government of Seattle wanted Chaz gone, all they'd have to do is cut off their utilities, their Wi-Fi, their power, their water. It'd be that easy. So the next question becomes, what is the government using this autonomous zone for? If you take a look at the historical voting records of the state of Washington, provided by the University of Washington, the history is more progressive and radical than other states and has been for the last 120 years. With socialist and communist party votes really giving the two-party system a run for their money over the last century. Banking families of a certain Mystery Babylon tribe and funding of communist rev revolutions are intricately intertwined throughout recent history. And Seattle sure has its share of banking families, including Bill Gates' family. So I think we can certainly say that the government of Seattle has a wide foundation of socialist and communist leanings, and you can support these claims with data, which makes it understandable as to how Antifa now has a stronghold there. And I might seem like I'm getting a little bit off track here, but I promise I'm just rounding the bases, so bear with me. If we go back to my video, Who Controls Bill Gates, I show you that Microsoft from the very beginning was managed by Bain, one of the big three consulting firms. Bain's role with Fortune 500 companies like Microsoft, Starbucks, Monsanto, etc., is to manage and staff them, often with Bain's own people. Like I said in the video, they leave the name, they leave the shell of the company, and they staff them with their own people. Did you think that Bill Gates was the one staffing his Microsoft empire? Mitt Romney, along with Bill Bain, is directly responsible for Bain Company, Bain Capital, and their clients. 
And Mitt Romney, who at the time was supposedly just a business guy and fake wholesome Mormon, was able to secure government contracts for his clients. Could you or I, as a civilian, just start a consulting firm and call up the United States government and get contracts for our clients? No, that'd just be silly. Mitt Romney was never just corporate. He was never just a family guy. He was always something more connected. So I use that example to ask, why are all of these rich corporate white guys like Mitt Romney marching in the streets with people who, brace yourselves because I'm gonna say it and I'm gonna offend people, but we're gonna move on from this, we'll move on. He's marching with people who are destroying property and espousing violence. He's got an armed guard behind him at the Black Lives Matter march. He's Mitt Romney. He's a sitting Republican senator. He was Bain Company, presidential candidate and multimillionaire. Do you really think he cares about you? Do you think he cares about police brutality? Is anything surrounding him, these protests, or this autonomous zone organic? Or is this tiny little group of very well-connected people purposefully inciting anger? I think it's a big tell that the first autonomous zone is Seattle. The first COVID case was Washington too. This is a territory that Bill Gates' family has controlled since 1913. There are a bunch of common threads here. You cannot say that Gates is unrelated to the power structure of Microsoft, the World Health Organization, Seattle, the Federal Reserve, or even the government for that matter. But if he's involved in any capacity, he's certainly not working alone either. Unfortunately for Chaz and their government-sponsored autonomous zone, I believe they're all just pawns being used by the government, the shadow government, the deep state, whatever you want to call it, to create chaos for the government's own objective. Is that objective to save their own butts? Is that objective to win an election? Is that objective to completely fracture the United States? Well, only time will tell. What do you think, internet friends? You know I always look forward to your comments. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, and supporting my channel on Patreon. Bye! I'm just a fake silhouette Avoiding every threat I wanna stay like a